Hello everyone and welcome back to High Finance Graduates. In this particular video, we are going to be focusing on the types of questions you can expect during your private equity interviews. Now, I know predominantly we focus on investment banking in this channel, but as of the past five years, there has been a significant change in this industry. Whereas typically, in order for you to break into private equity, you will have to go into investment banking or management consulting or a type of industry which focuses in deal making, do an MBA, and then break into private equity. So you pretty much start off at the associate level in private equity. But in the last five years, a lot of private equity firms have been going out to undergraduates and hiring at the analyst level roles. So what that means for you is, if you are trying to break into investment banking and if you're struggling, then another avenue is private equity firms because they are now recruiting directly alongside investment banks. And the great news is, the same types of roles which you're going to be doing in investment banking on the sell side, you'll pretty much be doing the exact same thing but on the buy side. So whether that's building financial models, using advanced Excel, uh, learning how to uh, break down financial statements, interpreting marketing materials, you're going to be doing the exact same thing but on the buy side in investment banking. So in this particular video, we are going to see exactly the type of questions which you need to prepare for in order to ace your interview. What's going to surprise you in this video is some of the questions which you can expect to get asked during your investment banking interview, you can also expect to get the exact same type of question in private equity interviews. So let's break down the typical private equity interview. Now, the typical interview is broken up into three areas. The first part is, of course, the technical aspect. So that's going to be testing your knowledge on accounting, finances, valuation models, LBO models, M&A models, the whole private equity landscape, capital structure. The second part of the interview is going to be building a financial model. Now, this is going to be different for different firms. Some private equity firms might ask you to build an LBO model which only takes one hour, whereas other firms might ask you to build an LBO model which is going to take three hours. And again, this is going to depend on the type of firm which you're going to be interviewing at. So for example, if you're going to be interviewing at a private equity firm which invests in early stage companies, and in those cases, then they're only going to give you a one hour LBO model because it doesn't tend to be very financial model heavy. On the other hand, if you're going to be interviewing at a private equity firm which invests in a variety of companies, and some of these companies are pretty mature and they have complicated financial and capital structures, in that case, then you can expect to get a full financial model. You can take pretty much anywhere from three to six hours to build those financial models, and you're gonna to have to build them on the laptop by yourself in a specific room which they're going to give you. And then finally, you are going to get asked behavioral questions. And again, these are to test whether you have the right motives for private equity, whether or not you've done your homework on the firm, whether or not you actually know what private equity is, and if, this is the right team and the right environment for you. So it's very important that you also know how to answer these questions. Now, before we get started with the actual questions and answers, I just wanna point out that a lot of the questions that you are going to get asked is going to be very dependent on your background. If you are from a traditional background, so if you are from investment banking or leverage finance, restructuring, even management consulting, then those are pretty deal heavy industries. And so during your interviews, you're going to get asked questions predominantly focused around some of the deals which you have been involved in, around the capital structure, around your assumptions. But if you are not from that background, then you are, going, you are still going to get asked technical questions, but they're not going to be very specific, whereas it's going to test your general knowledge on technicals and a lot of emphasis is going to be placed on whether or not you actually know how to build a financial model. So to begin with, let's talk about some of the most common questions which you can get. And some of these questions are almost guaranteed questions, especially if you are from a deal related background. So if you are from investment banking, leverage finance, management consulting, and if you have worked on M&A deals, if you have worked on sell side and buy side transactions, then you're almost guaranteed to get asked the following question. Number one, walk me through a deal on your resume or the interviewer is going to go through your resume and pick a deal and they're going to ask the interviewee to walk through um, the specifics of that deal. So here you pretty much have to talk about your investment decisions, the purchasing price, the operating forecast, capital structure, the deal issues and the expected rate of return which you forecasted and anything else which is relevant of, in terms of the deal structure. You are expected to be able to talk about your contribution to the deal and the investment drivers and the operating assumptions you made or you reached for the deal. Then 
you have to be able to talk about your assumptions and the multiples which you were prepared to purchase the company, the asset at, and the exit multiple, whether that's from an enterprise value, EBITDA, EBIT multiple, whatever multiple you choose, you have to be able to explain it and to justify it. You have to be able to talk about your assumptions you made and the specific sources and use of funding for the deal and whether you were heavily involved in the deal and also talk about the specifics around due diligence. So any issues which might have occurred around the due diligence process from a legal perspective, from an accounting perspective, from a tax perspective. And towards the end, you can also get asked questions about your view of the deal and how you put the deal, how you structured it together. So now let's move on to the second question. And again, this is pretty much a guaranteed question and that is why do you want to work for this firm in particular? And what the interviewer here is looking for, well, what they're not looking for is for you to just regurgitate whatever is on their website or for you to tell them that this private equity firm is very prestigious. What they want to see is that, do you have a real reason as to why you want to work for this firm? And the best way to communicate that is to combine your experience, your history, your interest with the activities of this private equity firm. And you can pretty much focus on three areas. Number one, the industry which the private equity firm focuses in. So whether this private equity firm focuses in the oil and gas sector or in the TMT sector, so technology, media and telecom, you have to be able to discuss your experience in this industry, your ability to communicate in industry jargon, and whether or not you actually know what's happening in this industry. The second area which you can focus on is the investment type. So you have to know if this private equity firm focuses purely in the equity or in the debt space or in the mezzanine financing space or in distress investing. Do you have experience with distress investing? Do you have experience with equity investing? Do you have experience investing in small companies or larger companies? You have to be able to uh, evidence that throughout your experience and your interest. Finally, you can also focus on the regional area which the private equity firm invests in. And if you have worked in those areas or if you speak the local language, then this can definitely be an advantage because you can definitely take a lot more roles or a lot more responsibility in those deals because you speak the language. Okay, so there are a lot more common questions and almost guaranteed questions and you can pretty much check them out in our private equity interview and recruitment guide. I'm not going to focus too much on these questions because I want to take a look at other types of questions as well. So now let's move on to some basic questions. And a very common question is, how would you solve a disagreement between a buyer and a seller in terms of price? So essentially, this is a very, very common scenario that you will find in investment banking and making deals with private equity firms where you have the seller that claims that they can achieve 100 million in sales within three years. But then the private equity firm, uh, according to their financial model, you can only get 80 million in three years. So how do you bridge the gap in this case? And a simple way to bridge the gap is to create what is called an earnout schedule. And what this simply means is you can pretty much go ahead with the deal at an 80 million valuation, but you create an earnout schedule which will compensate the, the seller if the additional uh, 20 million is achieved. So if the firm truly does make 100 million in three years, then the seller will get additional remuneration. And these earnout schedule, they're pretty simple. They're usually on a fixed period basis and they're based on financial metrics. So if the company does achieve certain milestones, then the seller is entitled to get a specific amount. And that's how you pretty much bridge the gap between buyers and sellers. So now let's move on to another common question, which is what are some common areas of due diligence? And due diligence is a very important aspect of private equity. Especially since you're going to be dealing with a lot of private companies and when investment banks are going to be sending over marketing materials, private equity analysts and associates and sometimes even VP are going to get involved in the due diligence process, which is essentially checking that, that the company is real, checking that they are selling what they're claiming to sell, that they have the right to sell it, that they have patents protecting these products, accounting books are not cooked, that they do have the distribution channel in place, that they do have warehouses which are stocked. And it's pretty much checking that the company is real. And sometimes you might have to use third parties such as management consultants, you might have to do channel checks, you might have to contact lawyers, accountants in order to help you with the whole due diligence process. So as you can imagine, there's a lot to unpack here. But for those of you with the private equity interview and recruitment guide, there are a lot of videos which pretty much details 
and the A to Z of how you conduct due diligence for a private equity deal. So definitely do check that out because this is a very common question that you can expect for your private equity interviews. So now let's move on to some of the questions that you can get if you do have some experience. So for example, you can get asked, tell me about a deal when you struggled to complete the due diligence and what did you do? Tell me about the most complicated capital structure you had to model. Walk me through the private equity investment process. Walk me through the impact of an asset write down on the financial statement. Why did you study this degree, study at this institution, study this MBA and start your career in this particular field? Where would you put a convertible bond on the balance sheet? If convertible debt gets converted, how would that be reflected on the balance sheet? How would you calculate free cash flow? So now let's move on to some of the questions that you can get if you do have some experience with financial modeling. So you might get asked, walk me through how you would model XYZ company. Tell me about the hardest capital structure you've had to model out. What was so difficult about it and how did you deal with it? What's the difference between operating capital leases? Why would you capitalize an operating lease? How and why would you do it? How would you calculate an exit multiple? Walk me through the difference between internal rate of return and money on money multiple. Which is more important and from whose perspective? Now, in terms of the last question, the difference between internal rate of return and money on money multiple. This is a very common question that a lot of people don't quite seem to understand because the question here is asked from which perspective and depending on the perspective is very different because the fund wants to generate or achieve the highest rate of return on their investment. And one of the best ways to measure that is money on money multiple. But the internal rate of return, this is tricky because a lot of investors, whenever they want to invest in private equity firms, they tend to look at the internal rate of return. And sometimes in order for you to actually get in front of money allocators, capital allocators, in front of corporations that invest in private equity firms, you need to meet a specific um, internal rate of return target. Sometimes you might have to sacrifice additional revenue, which will, be, which will give you a higher MOM in order to achieve a certain level of internal rate of return just so that the next capital raise, the next fund you raise, you will be able to raise it uh, easily. But again, do check out the interview guide for a lot more details on this. So now let's move on to some of the most common behavioral questions that you can get. And one of the most common one is tell me about your biggest weaknesses or tell me three of your most biggest weaknesses. And essentially to answer this question correctly, you have to avoid some of the pitfalls. Number one, don't say you don't have any weaknesses because let's be honest, we're all human, we all have weaknesses, we all have shortcomings. Number two, don't say something as silly as I finish whatever I start or uh, my communication skill is bad when you're speaking perfect English. And number three, choose a real weakness because if you don't choose a real weakness, then your interviewer is going to doubt your sincerity and your honesty. Now, the trick to answering this question is to say something that is not going to affect your day-to-day -day work. So, for example, if you're going to be an analyst and you're not going to be managing anyone, then delegation could be a weakness because it's not going to affect your day-to-day -day role. Or public speaking could be a weakness because, again, it's not going to affect your day-to-day -day role. On the other hand, if you're an associate and you're going to be managing analysts, or if you're a VP and you're going to be managing associates and analysts, then delegation cannot be a weakness. Communication cannot be a weakness and public speaking cannot be a weakness if you're an MD or a VP because you are going to have to be presenting. So you have to pick weaknesses which are not going to affect your day-to-day -day role. And again, there are a long list of weaknesses which you can choose from, but just choose one which is not going to affect your day-to-day -day role. So now let's take a look at some more common technical questions. And again, if you do want to get a full list of private equity interview questions and answers, including behavioral questions, technical questions, then take a look at the private equity interview and recruitment guide, where we also go over how to structure deals, the due diligence, and the whole industry landscape of private equity. So you know exactly which private equity firms to target, how to break into the industry, and some of the tips and tricks which previous successful candidates have used in order to break into private equity successfully. So some of the most common questions which you have to prepare for are, walk me through an LBO model. Which of the valuation methods will tend to lead to the highest valuation? Walk me through a merger model. 
what is the internal rate of return with an equity investment of say 100 million and an equity value of 300 million after three years? Give me the calculation formula. Walk me through the next financial buy analysis. What is the next financial buy analysis? Explain the difference between WAC and IRR, internal rate of return. How do you treat deferred taxes in a DCF? So now let's take a look at some questions which are dependent on your background. So for example, you can get asked, discuss the pros and cons of a specific deal which was recently announced in the news. And if you have a background in that particular industry or you have experience in that particular industry, then you should be able to comfortably talk about the deal, the pros and cons, and some of the difficulties which you can expect to actually push the deal through. Again, like I've mentioned, most of the questions that you're going to get asked are going to be very dependent on your background. So if your background is deal related, whether investment banking, leverage finance, then you can expect to get a lot of questions around capital structure, around technicals, around some of the deals which you've worked on. And if your background is not deal related, then you can expect to get a variety of questions, but also there will be a lot of emphasis on how you answer behavioral questions and how you perform during the LBO case study. So now let's move on to behavioral question. Now, there are hundreds and hundreds of behavioral questions which we take a look at in the private equity guide. So I'm not gonna to focus too much on this because it's gonna take a lot of time and I know that a lot of candidates are far more concerned with the technical aspect of the interviews uh, more so than the behavioral questions. So another trick interview question is, with what other private equity firms are you currently interviewing at? And in reality, you don't want to say that you're interviewing at much better or at much more prestigious private equity firms than, than them. Because number one, they're going to think that even if they do give you an offer, you're not going to be their first pick. So the best way to get out of this is to just say that you are interviewing at other private equity firms because you also don't want to give the impression that you're not an attractive candidate, so you're not getting any interviews. So you have to give the impression that you are getting interviews, but you are going to choose them if they do give you an offer and that you are firm that private equity is the industry you wanna get into. Another trick question is, what other industries are you applying into? Your interviewer here wants to make sure that you are fully aware and you're fully prepared of the life you're about to embark on because when you start off in private equity, it's pretty much going to be similar to investment banking in terms of the hours, in terms of the culture. And pretty much if you walk into any uh, private equity firm, a lot of the people there are ex-investment bankers. So they do have that pre-built expectation of what's expected uh, from the junior staff and that's going to be carried away or from investment banking. So you have to be fully aware of exactly what you're getting yourself into and you have to know exactly how to communicate that. So when they are asking you what other industries are you interviewing, you do not want to say that you're interviewing in asset management or in marketing or in accounting or in audit. You just want to say that you are fixed on private equity and they might try to probe and to ask you what do you expect your day to day will be. And again, you have to understand this. You can, you can get this knowledge by pretty much networking with private equity professionals or by reading the guides on private equity. Okay, so now let's move on to a different topic, which is around economics and the business landscape. This is pretty important because this is how the interviewer is going to gauge how you view the world and gauge your assumptions, your views around economics, around central bank policy, around the business landscape itself. So some of the common questions which you can get is, in your view, what industry do you see as contracting the next year or so? Or what industry would you invest in now and why? And this will give the interviewer a good gauge as to which industries you're particularly focused on, which industries you're interested in, and which industries do you feel comfortable working in? Another question could be, tell me about a recent M&A deal or PE deal that was announced recently. Now, if we're talking about pure economic question, then the interviewer could ask you, what, what are your views on the economy in the next six to 12 months? What do you think the central bank is going to do? Are they going to begin QE? Are they going to hike interest rates? Are they going to lower interest rates? And this again is going to depend on the current economic environment you're in. And you have to be able to articulate the effects of central bank policy and how that's going to trickle down into the business landscape and how that's going to affect the private equity world from the rate that they can borrow to the opportunities which they have and what that means for them going forward in terms of debt repayment, in terms of their financial models and the implication. You can also get um, pretty specific questions such as name me a company that you think would be a great LBO target. 
And again, here you have to pretty much justify why you think from a financial perspective, a company would be a great LPO target. Okay, so now let's move on to a topic which I know a lot of you guys hate, which is brain teasers. The good news is brain teasers aren't as often asked in private equity as it is in investment banking, but nonetheless, some people still use brain teasers. And I'm not gonna go through a whole list of brain teasers. You can pretty much take a go online or you can use the guide to see some of the most common brain teasers and the solutions around them. So now let's take a look at the type of questions you should be asking your interviewer. At the end of every interview, your interviewer is going to ask you, do you have any questions for me? And you should never leave this blank because if you leave this blank, it means that you're not interested in the role, you're not really interested in the person interviewing you and it shows that you're not really invested in this. So there are a lot of good questions you, which you can ask and some of them are, how long have you been with this firm? What do you like best about working here or worst? What made you choose this particular group? How do you compare working here with other firms or funds? How would you describe the culture at this firm? On what type of deal are you currently working on right now? Can you tell me about your training program? What are some of the things that you wish you knew or wish you knew before becoming a private equity associate or VP? And again, these are just some of the questions, but you should never leave this blank. As long as you ask two or three good questions, you should be fine. Okay, so let's talk about next steps. And here you should pretty much be focusing on building and being able to build an LBO model and financial models, whether that's company comparables, DCF, m and model, LBO model, you should be comfortable at building financial models on Excel. And pretty much what they're going to do is they're going to take you to a room, they're going to give you a laptop uh, with Excel open and they're going to give you a list of assumptions and you just pretty much have to build uh, an LBO model around that or a valuation model depending on what the, the requirements are. Now, sometimes this task can be one hour to sometimes it could be anywhere from three to six and it really does depend on the kind of uh, industry team you're going into and the firm which you're going into. But at the end of the day, you have to be comfortable at building financial models on Excel. So if you are new to financial modeling, then take a look at our Excel financial modeling course, which will take you step by step throughout the whole process.